let's introduce complex numbers. Okay, so complex numbers is um, whenever we have a negative underneath the square root, up until this point, we've not been allowed to uh, get a solution from that. Basically, we've said no real solutions. So now what we're doing is we're introducing this concept of an imaginary number. So whenever we have the square root of a negative one, we can replace that with an i. So this imaginary part. And this um, group of numbers is larger than our real numbers. Okay, so how we express these is it's a plus bi um, is how we'd write a complex number where a is going to be the real part. So any real numbers would just be this a. And then we have an imaginary part, the bi part. Okay, so if we do have a square root of negative one or an i, that's going to go in this imaginary part at the end. Now, finding these or simplifying these down really isn't that bad. What we want to do is we want to be careful that if we ever have a square root of a negative one or a negative underneath the square root, we're going to replace that with an i. So let's work a few of these examples and show you exactly what we mean by this. All right, so we want to express the square root of negative nine in standard form, so that a plus bi. So how I want to think about this is the square root of negative nine can be thought of as the square root of negative one multiplied by nine. I think that's pretty straightforward. And with our square root rules, what we're allowed to do is if we have two things multiplied together underneath the square root, we can take a square root and put that over each one individually. Now they're still being multiplied together, but now each one individually has a square root. Now by definition, we said square root of negative one can be replaced with an i. And then all we have to do is simplify down the square root of nine, which we've done in the past, which would be three. So that's gonna be the same thing as three i, or in standard form, we could say zero plus three i. So what that would mean is our real part is zero and our imaginary part is three. All right, let's try it with the square root of negative 24. So a little bit more compl complicated one, but not too bad. Um, first, I would like to think about how would I factor the 24? Reducing down radicals, you wanna look for a perfect square that's a factor. So I think it's pretty straightforward. We could say negative one to account for the negative, but then splitting up 24, I think we would look for four times six makes 24. And four is a perfect square. So that's probably gonna be the easiest way to simplify this down. All right, so for the negative one, we can replace that with an I. Um, and for the time being, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna split this up one step at a time and put a square root over each one individually first. Now, as you get comfortable with these, you'll be able to speed up this process. So the square root of negative one is just gonna be an i. The square root of four is gonna be replaced with a two without a square root over it, because the square root of four is two. And then the square root of six comes along. Now you may say that's the same thing as zero plus two i square root of six. So two square root of six would be the imaginary part. The real part would be zero. All right, hope this helps out as you're trying to reduce these down. Um, work on getting rid of the negative from underneath here by putting an i outside of the radical and then simplifying down any, any other constant we have under here by looking for a way to factor it. So one of your factors is a perfect square, like two squared in this case, or three squared you're looking for nine, four squared looking for 16, et cetera. Um, as one of the factors, break it apart, and then uh, take the square root of the perfect square and you'll be able to get rid of the radical over top. All right, hope this helps out. Good luck as you're working on complex numbers.